Hi! If you're watching this on October 16th, then that means today's my birthday! Happy birthday, me! Thank you! The best gift you can give to me is enjoying this video, so yeah, watch it. Who are Ash Ketchum's strongest Pokemon? That's what we'll be finding out in this video. Last time, I went over the true win rates for all of Ash's Pokemon, which was fun, but that really isn't indicative of a Pokemon's true strength, as some could have been dealt a really shitty hand like Torterra, while others could have had it a bit easier like Levani. Instead, we'll be looking at each Pokemon's best performances to see how powerful they really are, and ranking them in this tier list. Unlike the win rate video, we'll be taking all battles into consideration. That's right, we're talking official, unofficial, wild, and even legendary battles. I'll also be including Ash's Journeys team for this one, as I feel like we've seen enough of them to come up with a decent estimate of their current strength. So strap your seatbelts ladies and gentlemen, cause this tier list is about to go crazy. Now let's get started. Alright, I'll be going over each Pokemon and tier from lowest to highest. So first up is the E tier, which I'll be referring to as the below average tier, consisting of Muck, Butterfree, Totodile, and Scraggy. Now just to get this out of the way, in no way am I saying that these are bad Pokemon or that they suck or anything, but compared to the rest of Ash's Pokemon, they just aren't as powerful. Starting with Muck, he's only gotten a win against Jeanette's Bellsprout, and that was thanks to its slimy body that was basically used for suffocation. Its only other use was in the battle against Gary, but it wasn't very useful, let's be honest. So until we see it display a bit more strength, it's gonna have to sit as Ash's weakest Pokemon. Butterfree is another one that didn't get a whole lot of action either, with its best performance being against the Gentleman's Raticate. Totodile has some decent moments like being able to defeat a Charizard, but keep in mind that that was a rental Charizard that probably isn't on the same caliber as Leon's, Alon's, or even Kiawe's. There aren't really any other outstanding performances besides that. And then there's Scraggy, who I will admit was great to see develop into a decent battler and even rocks the move Focus Blast, but you've gotta admit he hasn't really taken out any major opponents aside from Bryson's Vanillish. Next, let's move on to the D tier, also known as the Average tier, consisting of Not So Shit Pheasant, Oshawott, Pidgeot, Palpitoad, Lapras, Noctowl, Apom, Boldor, Bayleaf, Primeape, and Snivy. This is pretty much what I'd consider to be the baseline for Ash Pokemon. Although kinda low in terms of this tier list, these are still pretty good mons that at the very least have the strength to rival gym leaders. First there's Unpheasant, who I have to be honest deserves a bit more credit as she was able to defeat Skyla Swoobat and Swana. Don't let that get to your head though, cause you're still pretty low for an Ash mon. When it comes to Oshawott, its best performance comes from Clay's Crocorock, but keep in mind it took several hits to take it down even though it had a type advantage. Not really that impressive considering higher up this list we have Pokemon that can sometimes 2 or even 1 shot far more powerful opponents. Like coincidentally, Pidgeot, who was able to 2 shot the Rhydon Jesse used at the Viridian Gym, which is impressive considering it belongs to Giovanni. Palpatine's best performance was taking down Elisa Zebstrika, the same one that swept Bianca's whole team, so that's pretty good. However, it tied against Stefan's Zebstrika, so it wasn't strong enough to completely win against that one unfortunately. As for Lapras, it's had against Drake's Gengar, and that's its only battle experience. I mean, it's kind of impressive, sorta. Then there's Noctowl, who could defeat Morty's Gengar, who I think might be better than Drake's Gengar considering Morty's a ghost type specialist and that was his ace. Apom was pretty solid in early Sinnoh, however at that point Ash wasn't facing opponents that were too strong just yet. The strongest Pokemon Apom's defeated was Gardenia's Rose Raid. And then we have Boldor, with its most impressive win being against Clay's Excadrill. Now interestingly enough, I was actually gonna have it be below Oshawa, believe it or not, but in the battle against Cameron's Hydreigon, its one Rock Smash did more damage than any of Oshawa's four moves against the same Pokemon. So that was a cool way to help rank them. Bailey's best battles come from taking down Chuck's Polyrath and Machoke, and then also taking down Harrison's Houndoom, while Primeape helped Ash win the P1 Grand Prix. However, none of the trainers there really seem too outstanding to be honest, they just seem like your average trainer, so Primeape doesn't have any crazy feats. And lastly, there's Snivy, who was able to defeat Trip Servine early on, but it quickly surpassed it by their next battle, so that sucks. It's not even on the level where it can at least touch a legendary, so its best performance really comes from defeating Clay's Palpitoad, I guess. Now comes the C tier, aka the above average tier. The strength of these Pokemon surpasses that of gym leaders, as they can do pretty well in a Pokemon League setting. First is Buizel, 
who's strong enough to defeat Fantina's Gengar, tie with Meilin's Lucario, and even defeat its evolved form Floatzel. Then there's Livani, who took up the Coughing that was strong enough to defeat on Pheasant and Boldor. It was also able to go toe to toe with Stefan Sock thanks to its Swarm ability. Following that, we have Heracross. I think it slightly surpasses Livani because it was able to take out Gary's Magmar, a Pokemon it has a huge disadvantage to. It was also strong enough to land a decent blow on Tobias' Darkrai. Kingler comes right after. Its most impressive victory comes from sweeping Mandy's entire team in the Indigo League, with no prior battle experience, mind you. It's also strong enough to crack a cloister shell. Next is Quilava, whose most impressive feat was going underwater to defeat Price's Dugong, as a Cyndaquil. And considering it's evolved now, it's probably a bit more stronger than that too. After him, I have Saraptor. Unlike the other birds I talked about, Saraptor packs the move Brave Bird, which gives it the edge to defeat foes like Paul's Weavile and Candace's Medicham. Those are probably its most impressive wins. Gribble also makes it into this tier. It was strong enough to defeat Conway Shuckle and Dusk Noir, as well as being able to land a good Rock Smash on Tobias' Darkrai. Gibble is so strong in fact that even Tobias acknowledged its strength by saying that his Draco Meteor could have defeated any other opponent that wasn't his Darkrai. Next is Pig Knight, which is strong enough to defeat Cameron's pseudo-legendary Hydreigon. Pig Knight was also strong enough to defeat Seamus' Embor and Heatmore at the same time since, you know, Snivy couldn't help. Now after Pig Knight, we have our first Journeys Mon, Camon, or Surfest. Now unfortunately, Camon is a Pokemon we probably know the least about in terms of strength as its only wins come from Rinto's Gallade and Genba's Girder. For now, I'm keeping it at the above average tier, solely for the fact that as a far-fetched, it was able to break Girder's Steel Beam. Now imagine that strength, but as a surfetched. After him we have... Gliscor! Although he has a pretty shitty win rate, he was able to defeat Paul's busted Drapion, so he definitely deserves some love for that. I mean, the boy's packing the move Giga Impact, so of course he's strong. Then there's Glalie, who was able to defeat two Pokemon it has a disadvantage to. Morrison's Matang, and more impressively, Clark's Charizard. That was awesome. Following Glalie is Dawnfan. Its most impressive win comes from defeating Lucy Saviper. Now something to note here is that Frontier Brains are confirmed by Scott to be Elite 4 level, so that's actually really impressive. However, Lucy's probably the weakest Frontier Brain, and Saviper isn't even Lucy's strongest Pokemon. Next is Tauros. This Pokemon was strong enough to defeat Drake's Venusaur, and even won Ash the Pokemon Swap Meet Tauros competition, so it's probably stronger than the average Tauros. But what really proves its strength though, is tying with Annabelle's pseudo-legendary Metagross, so it's at the very least on par with that Pokemon. Squirtle comes in second to last for this tier, as it was able to defeat Brandon's Ninjas. It also has a really good win against Macy's Electabuzz, where it really showed off the strength of its firefighter training. And lastly, we have the boy Rowlet, finishing off this tier. Not only was he strong enough to defeat his evolved form Decidueye, but he also defeated Kakui's Braviary, arguably Kakui's second ace Pokemon. Now we move on to the B tier, for Pokemon I believe possess elite 4 levels of strength. Starting off, we have Talonflame, a Pokemon that's shown a lot of strength from very early on, since it was able to defeat its final evolved form Talonflame as a Fletchender. Another notable feat includes defeating Wolfric's Avalug, which was strong enough to defeat Greninja. But I think Talonflame's best moment had to be when it went up against the legendary Moltres. Although it lost, pretty badly, it still deserves credit for being able to land a Brave Bird with some decent knockback. Being able to do that to a legendary puts this Pokemon way above average in my book. After Talonflame, I have Corphish. His greatest feats come from defeating Tucker's Arcanine and Annabelle's Alakazam. As I said before, Frontier Brains are on the same level as Elite 4 members, so if Corphish was able to take out multiple Battle Frontier Pokemon, that tells me that Corphish should be considered as Elite 4 level as well. Next comes a very surprising entry, Torkoal. Now if you just went off his performance in Hoenn, he kinda sucks. But I guess the man has been hitting the juice at Oak's lab because when Ash brings him back to face Brandon's Registeel, he kicks some serious ass. Although Torkoal loses, this is easily his best battle. His Body Slam was strong enough to knock down Registeel twice, and his Heat Wave was strong enough to push back Registeel's Sandstorm and trap it in a Flaming Vortex. Honestly, if it wasn't for Registeel's Lock-On, I think Torkoal would've won. So although Torkoal is known for losing a lot of the time, he was able to hold his own against the Legendary, which is really impressive. 
I mean, there's a reason why Ash brought it to the Tobias fight after all, even though it didn't do anything. Following Torkoal, we have Gengar. Now this one was kinda hard to place as currently Gengar isn't looking so good in Pokemon Journeys. But I have a theory, what if Gengar is just too OP which is why the writers keep making him lose? One can dream am I right? First of all, he has a pretty stacked moveset with Nightshade, Psychic, Ice Punch and Shadow Ball. The move I really wanna focus on though is Psychic, cause when Gengar lands that move he's actually pretty broken. With Psychic, Gengar can float around his opponent and wreck their shit in all kinds of ways. Just ask Vizquez's Raichu. As of the making of this video, his best display of strength can be seen in the battle against Volkner's Luxray. Gengar was low key beating up Luxray, to the point where Volkner had to make the switch or it would have lost. Mind you, this is the same Luxray that was Volkner's ace against Infernape. And Volkner has been confirmed to be the strongest Sinnoh gym leader, almost on the level of the Elite Four. In Pokemon Journeys, he's gotten even stronger, so he's definitely Elite Four level by now, or at the very least, right under them. So if Gengar's strength was a threat to Volkner's Luxray, that should give you a hint at how strong he really is. It also looks like he'll be able to Gigantamax soon, so that's just gonna increase his power output. He's just… not so good at taking damage is all. Next up is Bulbasaur. This Pokemon proves that there are other ways to be strong that don't just include evolution. In the Johto League, it tied with a Meganium, proving that it was equal in strength to a fully evolved starter. But it gets better from here, because in the Battle Frontier, it's able to defeat Brandon's Dusclops, the same Dusclops that defeated Charizard, as well as tie with Brandon's Solrock. That's two Battle Frontier Pokemon in one battle, so it's safe to say that Bulbasaur is pretty strong. After him, we've got another entry that might be a surprise, Torterra. Yes, despite its many losses, I believe Torterra possesses elite 4 levels of strength. Why? Well look at the two notable losses it had after evolving. It's lost to Palmer's Rhyperior and Birthless Hippowdon, two Elite 4 level Pokemon. That couldn't have been easy, even if it had a type advantage. Torterra actually performed really well in both of these battles, it's just that the strength of its opponents were slightly higher. Something that really stands out though is that it almost defeated Palmer's Rhyperior as a Grottle. If it got that close to winning as a mere Grottle, imagine how much better it would do now that it's a fully evolved Torterra. I might catch some heat for this one, but I honestly think Torterra has enough strength to rival some Elite 4 Pokemon. And if you need even more proof, then just look at this. Elite 4 Eren's ace Pokemon, Drapion, was taken down by Jesse Seviper. And that same Seviper gets taken out by Ash's Torterra in a one on one fight. So do what you will with that information. Next is Halucha, the Mad Luchador. Not only is Halucha strong enough to defeat fairy types, a type it's weak against, and also break trick rooms, okay. He also defeated Wolfric's Abomasnow and even a Mega Absol. That's already really impressive and makes him an above average Pokemon, but what really brings Halucha up is his battle against Zapdos. Although he got nae would pretty easily, he was able to land a high jump kick that had enough power to completely blow back Zapdos. He's an absolute mad lad. Following Halucha is Lycanroc, the mon that helped Ash win the Alola League. That feat alone already proves that its strength is above your average league participant. It's also worth noting that it can use the exclusive Z move Splintered Storm Shard, which does some serious damage. On top of that, it was able to sweep Nano's team of 3 Pokemon on its own, as well as receive training from Tapu Bulu where it landed a solid hit with its Stone Edge. Yet another Ash Pokemon that scrapped with legendaries. Speaking of which, next is Best Bird Swellow. This bird has some insane feats, like as a Taillow, it was eating up Pikachu's Thunderbolts like it was breakfast. It's thanks to this high resistance to electricity that it was able to pull off Thunder Armor. Some other crazy feats include going underwater to defeat Juan's Wishcash, stopping a Don fan's rollout with its f***ing talons and then defeating it by just tossing it, and also defeating Tucker's Swampert and Spencer's Venusaur. Damn, Swallow might be the true god bird after all. The icing on the cake is that it was able to land a damaging aerial ace on a Deoxys. Need I say more? Swallow's freaking based. Next we have Naganoddle. He didn't have a lot of battles, but I still think he's done enough to put him on this tier. For starters, it was strong enough to send the Guzzlord through an Ultra Wormhole with the help of just Pikachu. Keep in mind that other Guzzlords in the same episode needed more than two Pokemon to take it on, and even the Tapus had to step in and hold one back. It's also been able to defeat Kakui's Lucario, which is pretty impressive considering the anime has this thing for making Lucario seem unstoppable. So if they're willing to make one lose, then it's kind of a big deal. And lastly, it was able to hold its own against Tapu Koko for a bit. Naganado was doing pretty well to be honest, but unfortunately loses due to Tapu Koko's speed. But still, a very impressive Pokemon nonetheless. 
And the last one we have for the Elite Four tier is Noivern. Another Pokemon that might come as a shock considering Noivern takes quite a few L's. This is due to the fact that during XY, Noivern was still pretty young and lacked the proper battle experience. But just because it didn't have the skill to win a lot, does not mean it lacked the power. For instance, it was able to tie with Sawyer Salamence. This lets us know that Noivern's power is at least equal to a pseudo-legendary. Its most impressive feat, however, comes from its battle against Zapdos, where it was able to blow it back with the Boom Burst and temporarily knock it down. Noivern's Boom Burst is easily its most powerful move. This move is so strong in fact that it was able to completely interrupt the Aqua Jet from Sawyer's Clawitzer. And if you compare the damage done to legendaries from all the other Pokemon we've talked about so far, Noivern's attack clearly did the most damage. So yes, this boy does in fact possess elite 4 levels of strength. Now he just needs to learn how to use it properly. Alright, now it's time for the A tier, aka the champion tier for Pokemon with champion levels of strength. Kicking off this tier, we have Gudra. Now I know I gave Gudra a lot of shit in the win rate video for being a Kalos League jobber, but he's still pretty amazing. What truly really makes this Pokemon shine is how bulky he is. I know this list isn't taking defense into consideration as it's purely about strength and power, but Gujra's a special case because it's a Pokemon that turns its defense into a devastating offense. This is thanks to the move Bide. Because Gujra is so tanky, he can eat up tons of hits, survive it all, mostly, and throw it back at his opponents with double the power. So as long as you're not a fairy type or packing a one hit KO move, Gujra can and will wreck your shit. Following Gudra, we have Ash's mythical, Melmetal. Like Noivern, this is another Pokemon that lacks the battle experience, but has incredible power nonetheless. In the battle against Kakui's Empoleon, it was able to deflect the Hydro Pump with absolute ease. That wasn't even a move, he was just swinging his arms and brushing it off like it was nothing. Its double iron bash was enough to send Empoleon flying, and knocked it out even though he was on the defensive. Keep in mind that it's a steel type move that Empoleon should resist. I think its best display of strength, however, comes from the battle against Gladion Silvalli. Although Pikachu's the one that got the win in the end, Melmetal is actually the one who did most of the work by absolutely tenderizing Silvalli like a steak. He ultimately loses due to his lack of speed, but if he kept landing those hits, he would have won. Next up is Dracovish. What? Now, some of you might think I'm crazy for rating Dracovish, a Pokemon that's only had one battle so far this high, but trust me, it's already done enough to prove its strength. It was used in the battle against Iris, where it took out her Dragonite, which is an insane feat for a Pokemon's first battle. Iris's Dragonite was near unstoppable in black and white, and whenever it used its finishing move Dragon Rush, it was pretty much over. But here comes Dracovish, who was able to catch and completely stop said finishing move in its mouth with Vicious Rend. Then with one Ice Fang, Dragonite is taken out. That is unreal. Now Dracovish can't take all the credit as Iris' Dragonite did take some damage from Ash's Dragonite, which is a whole other beast we'll get to soon, but just the simple fact that it was able to finish the job and the way that it did with such ease means that Dracovish is hella strong. Also, keep in mind that this is an Iris that is leaps and bounds stronger compared to her black and white counterpart considering she's a champion now. Alright, as of this point we've only got 10 Pokemon remaining, meaning these are technically Ash's top 10 strongest Pokemon, in my opinion and the number 10 spot goes to Incineroar. Now this one is interesting because we don't really know what Incineroar is capable of in its final evolution, but as a Taurus Cat, it was able to defeat Kakui's Incineroar, which is more than enough to be honest. Kakui was known as the strongest trainer in Alola under the alias of the Mask Royal, with his ace being Incineroar. They were undefeated. So if Torkat was able to defeat him, that makes it stronger than Kakui's Incineroar. And because it evolved, it's technically even stronger now. It could honestly be even higher, but seeing as how we haven't even seen Incineroar in action just yet, we don't really know how much stronger it is. Kukui's Incineroar was able to catch Melmetal's Double Iron Bash with its bare... Pause. So if it was able to do that and absolutely decimate it after, that means Ash's Incineroar is most likely above his Melmetal as well. So I think this is a good placement for the cat for now. Next is number 9, and that goes to Crocodile. Its most epic moment probably comes from the battle against Bryson's Bear Tick, where despite the disadvantage, it was able to win by using a mid-air stone edge. But that isn't its greatest feat. To me, that comes in the win against Iris' Dragonite. We just talked about how strong Dragonite is, so the fact that Crocodile was able to beat it in a one-on-one -on -one match is something to behold. And just in case you needed a reminder of how strong Dragonite was, this is the very same Dragonite that was duking it out with legendaries just 5 episodes later with zero training. So if Crocodile could take down that beast, he's kind of a beast himself. Speaking of beasts, Ash's 8th strongest Pokemon goes to Snorlax. 
Now when you think of Ash's Snorlax and how strong it is, the first thing that probably comes to mind is, oh my god, it used 6 moves in one battle. Yeah, yeah, I've heard it before. Thanks, Aura Guardian. Although Snorlax did that, keep in mind that this was back in Gen 3 when the anime didn't have restrictions on how many moves Pokemon could use. Ever since Gen 4, Pokemon have had 4 moves max like in the games, so I doubt Snorlax still has 6 moves. Plus, it's not the fact that it had 6 moves that proves Snorlax's strength, it's the power behind those moves. Because Groval kinda jobbed against Greta, Snorlax had to take on Greta's Hariyama and Medicham alone, and it managed to win. That's 2 Battle Frontier Pokemon back to back a feat none of Ash's other Pokemon have achieved. Next up is Lucario. This one I could possibly see being even higher, but for the time being, it'll sit here as 7th strongest. As a mere Riolu, it was able to tie with B's Grap Locked. This is impressive because Galar Gym Leaders are far stronger than your average Gym Leader. Raihan, the strongest Galar Gym Leader, is confirmed to be on the level of Champions, so that puts Galar Gym Leaders around the level of Elite 4 Trainers. So the fact that as a Riolu, it was able to tie with one of B's star Pokemon says a lot. As a newly evolved Lucario, it was able to one-shot Chairman Rose's Ferrothorn and Kaparaja one after the other. This is a big deal considering Rose is strong enough to be a champion himself. Circling back to B though, as of the making of this video, it's been confirmed that Ash and B are about to have their third battle. And in said battle, Ash will be mega evolving his Lucario to take on B's G-Max Machamp. I already believe regular Lucario is strong enough to be considered Elite 4 level to be honest, so if it mega evolves, then his power is just gonna go beyond that, which is why I believe it's going to be champion level. And if he actually does help Ash defeat B, which let's be honest he probably will, that would just prove my point even further. God I hope this ages well. And finishing off this tier is the 6th strongest Ash Pokemon, Dragonite. Now I know some might want to say that Ash's Dragonite should be the strongest because it's currently undefeated, but guys, Journeys isn't done just yet, so let's not use that as a valid argument. We all know what happened to Gujar when he was undefeated. Still, Dragonite has already proven that it's an absolute monster on the battlefield. In the battle against Karina, it had to take on Mian Chao and Mega Lucario back to back and won. Its next and even crazier feat comes from defeating Iris' Haxorus by learning Draco Meteor. Freaking insane. Yeah, you could argue that maybe Iris is the weakest champion or get mad at the writing or whatever, but that still doesn't change the fact that Ash's Dragonite has beaten a champion's ace Pokemon, after taking damage from Iris's Dragonite mind you. Yeah, Dragonite is 100% champion level after that. Now we've reached the final tier, the S tier, aka the legendary tier. These are for what I consider Ash's most powerful Pokemon that have strength equal to legendaries. Starting off this tier is Ash's 5th strongest Pokemon, Sceptile. Now although it has a pretty embarrassing win rate for an ace Pokemon, as a Sceptile, he's had some incredible feats. After evolving, Sceptile has been able to defeat Spencer's Shiftry and then later on Spencer's Claydol, 2 Battle Frontier Pokemon. Then there's the most obvious feat, defeating Tobias' undefeated Darkrai. That's extremely impressive, and I don't blame people for always pointing out this battle. But people also gotta keep in mind that Darkrai already received some damage from Heracross and Gibble, so Sceptile can't take all the credit for that one. But you know what it can take credit for? Being able to catch a Speed Form Deoxys and blast it with a Point Blank Solar Beam. Now that's f***ing insane. Following Sceptile, we have Infernape as Ash's 4th strongest Pokemon. Now this one's a bit interesting as Infernape doesn't have as many crazy feats as Sceptile. Its best battles come from defeating Volgner's Luxray and wiping out half of Paul's team in the Sinnoh League, which included his Electivire. Those are some really strong trainers, but nothing I'd really say can put him in Legendary or even Champion level, right? Heck, Infernape hasn't even beaten a Legendary, he got clapped by Moltres in Pokemon Journeys. You know what, I'm bringing him down. I'm just kidding. Here's why I believe Infernape belongs in the S tier. Even though Ash left him at Oak's lab since Diamond and Pearl, Pokemon Journeys has confirmed that Infernape has been always training, even going as far as to challenge Ash's other fire types, minus Torkoal, rest in peace. He worked his way to the final boss, Charizard, and although it's never confirmed who won as it's only stated that they battled, the fact that he battled Charizard and still wanted to face a stronger opponent means that Infernape is at least an equal to Charizard, who spoilers, I still have above Infernape. But there's a reason for that. Although Infernape did kinda bad against Moltres, keep in mind that it didn't activate its Blaze ability. He was about to continue with the battle, but then Gary stole the spotlight. If Infernape were to keep battling, there's no doubt in my mind that it would've activated Blaze and possibly even defeat Moltres. But it's because of that uncertainty that I didn't want to put Infernape any higher than Charizard. I will at least have it higher than Sceptile, because although Sceptile has its Overgrow ability, that is nothing compared to the power boost Infernape gets with Blaze. 
His ability far exceeds the average blaze, and whenever Infernape activated it, it usually meant his opponent would lose after one or two hits. I definitely think that's enough power to rival legendaries. And since we kinda brought him up already, it works out perfectly that Charizard is Ash's third strongest Pokemon. His goal is to be the world's strongest Charizard, which is why he stayed to train in the Charizard Valley for a while. And for a time before Alon and Leon's Charizard came into the picture, I probably would have believed that Ash's Charizard was the strongest. Its greatest feat was defeating Nolan's Articuno. It was also giving a good clobbering to Iris' Dragonite when it came to Unova, and it probably would have won if N didn't interrupt the battle. He may not be in the Charizard Valley anymore, but at least he's got Infernape as a good sparring partner, which is why I have these two boys side to side. Following Charizard, we have Ash's second strongest Pokemon, Greninja. Now this one might also seem a bit tricky because like Infernape, it hasn't defeated a legendary, but I definitely believe it possesses the power to defeat one. Thanks to the power of the Bond Phenomenon, Greninja can achieve its transformation, Satoshi Gekoga, which is pretty much like the power of Mega Evolution. With this form, Greninja was able to defeat Wolfric's Mega Obama Snow and Sawyer's Mega Subtile. That's already some pretty great feats. But ironically, I think its most impressive feat comes from the battle against Alon's Charizard. That he lost. You see, although Greninja lost the battle, it's the only Pokemon in the entire Kalos League that was close to defeating Alon's Charizard. Mind you, this is a Charizard that's battled Mega Rayquaza, Primal Groudon, and Primal Kyogre, has beaten 10 Mega Evolved Pokemon in a row, including Elite 4 Malva, and even took down a Zygarde. So the fact that Greninja almost beat this broken Charizard proves that he's pretty close to that insane power himself. And because I believe Alon's Charizard is stronger than Ash's, Greninja kinda has to be above Ash's Charizard as well to match Alon's. But just to let you know, these four are honestly extremely close to each other for me. Like, it doesn't really matter what order these are in because they've all proven to be the best of the best. Hey, what do you think you're doing here? And with that, we've reached our final entry, Ash's most powerful Pokemon. And obviously, it's Pikachu. Was it really gonna be any other Pokemon? Now sure, Pikachu's had some embarrassing losses. It's lost to an Eevee, it's lost to a Sneasel, it's lost to a Meowth, it's lost to a Surskit, and it's lost to a f***ing Snivy. But what do you expect? It's a little Pikachu. If you hit it hard enough, it'll go down. I always saw Ash's Pikachu as a glass cannon, extremely fragile, but when it hits, it hits like a damn truck. When it comes to power alone, Pikachu is second to none. Some insane feats include defeating Drake's Dragonite, Lucy's Milotic, and taking out Alon's Tyranitar and Metagross in the same battle. For its small size, that's already really impressive. And then you remember, oh right, Ash's Pikachu has defeated the most legendary Pokemon in the Pokemon anime. He's defeated Brandon's Regice, tied with Tobias's Latios, beat Gladion's Silvalli, and even beat Tapu Koko thanks to its Z-move. And that's not even taking into consideration the countless other legendaries it's battled throughout the series. No other Ash Pokemon can ever or will ever come close. And by the way, that's something we should go back to. The Z-Move. 10 million volt Thunderbolt is the most powerful Z-Move Ash can unleash, and it's exclusive to Pikachu. When it's used, it's pretty much an instant kill switch that leaves no survivors. Juiced up Nihiligo, Jesse's Mimikyu, and even the legendary Tapu Koko all fall to Pikachu's devastating move. That damn attack is even strong enough to overpower Motor Drive, an ability that's supposed to absorb and nullify all electric attacks. If that's not power, I don't know what is. Thank you all for watching everyone, this video was a lot of fun to make. If you're new here and enjoyed this content, why not consider subscribing? Remember to leave your life to the fullest and have yourself a damn good one.